Harding University just boat raced number one seed the Colorado School of Mines in the Division II national title game 38-7 on Saturday. In an era of college football dominated by the pass game, the Bison played an old-school offense known as the Flexbone, yet still put up huge numbers on the ground. En route to the national title, they broke the NCAA record for most rushing yards in a season, becoming the first school to ever rush for over 6,000 yards on the season. This is the story of the Division II national champions. This is the story of the rise of Harding football. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I am planning to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know who your favorite Division II football team is in the comment section below. Harding University is located in Searcy, Arkansas, which is northeast of Little Rock and west of Memphis. They began playing football in 1924, putting together a 1928-6 record their first eight seasons as a program, getting most of their wins against high schools in the area and other schools B and C teams. While they were not playing big-name schools, they were still able to put together a strong fan base that was supporting the team no matter what happened on the field. The team would fold during the Great Depression in 1931, but fans hoped that one day it would return. Finally, after almost three decades, former Harding star Irvin Pinky Berryhill would bring the team back in 1959 while serving as the school's athletic director. While the school's main football team was gone, they still fielded an intramural two-hand touch team, which would evolve into a flag football team and later tackle football team. Leading the varsity's team in its return would be legendary Oklahoma Sooners player Carl Allison, who was a member of Bud Wilkinson's dynasty in Norman and even served as a team captain in 1954. Allison hired coaches from the Sooner State and they began to make the state of Oklahoma an important recruiting ground for the school. Since the program was reinstated, they've only had six head coaches in over 70 years with Larry Richmond, Randy Tribble, and Ronnie Huckabah all having winning records when they served as head coach. Tribble and Huckabo were also longtime assistants at the school before becoming their head coach. They were members of the Arkansas Intercollegiate Conference until 1994, winning three conference titles and making it to the NAIA Division I playoffs twice in 1989 and 1992, losing in the first round both times. They have since spent time as members of the Lone Star Conference and Gulf South Conference, moving to the NCAA Division II ranks during that same period. Ronnie Huckaba served as head coach of Harding from 2007 until 2016, leading them through the transition from the Gulf South Conference to the Great American Conference in 2011. The program would sit around the 500 record during his first five seasons, but going into the 2012 season, that would all change. Harding put together three straight 9-2 records from 2012 until 2014, making it to the Division II playoffs for the first time in school history, where they would lose in the first round in 2012 and 2014. In 2013, they played in the live United Texar Cannibal, winning the game, and in 2015, they missed the playoffs once again. In 2016, Harding put together a 13-1 record and beat Central Missouri in the first round, 38-31, winning the school's ever first playoff game. They upset Division II powerhouse Sioux Falls 27-24 in overtime in the second round and looked to be on a magical run. Many wondered whether this would be the year they made it all the way to the Division II national title game. Unfortunately, they would fall to Northwest Missouri State in the quarterfinals, being blown out 35 to nothing. Northwest Missouri State would go on to win the Division II national title game that season, blowing out North Alabama 29-3 in a championship game to cap off a 15-0 season. After the season, Huckabo would choose to retire and Harding chose to promote defensive coordinator Paul Simons to head coach. Simons played for Harding in the 90s as a linebacker and defensive end and was inducted to the Athletic Hall of Fame in 1999. He became a high school coach in 1998 and joined the Harding staff in 2006 as a defensive line coach. In 2010, he was promoted to defensive coordinator and he was a Harding legend and was the perfect guy to take over the program in 2017. Simons was actually born in Zambia, while his parents were on a missionary trip and serving as teachers in the African country, but spent most of his life in Arkansas. Simons found immediate success. Harding made it back to the Division II playoffs for the second year in a row, beating Indianapolis in the first round 27-24, Ashland in the second round 34-24, Division II powerhouse Ferris State 16-14 in the quarterfinals to set up a semifinal matchup against Texas A&M Commerce. 
They were on the doorstep of the Division II national title game, but could not pull off the upset, losing to Luis Perez, one of my favorite Spring League quarterbacks, Lions team 31-17, and watched as the Lions went on to beat West Florida in the national title game. Two years in a row, they went on a lengthy playoff run and lost to the eventual Division II national champion. They returned to the playoffs in both 2018 and 2019, but lost in the first rounds both years to Ferris State and Northwest Missouri State in respective years. Harding would not play during the 2020 season due to the season being canceled because of COVID, but won the Great American Conference in 2021 with a 10-1 regular season record. They made their fourth straight appearance in the Division II playoffs, beating Washburn in the first round, but lost to Northwest Missouri State again in the second round. In 2022, they would go 9-2, but missed out on the Division II playoffs for the first time under Simons. Heading into the 2023 season, Harding's entered the year ranked as the 14th best team in Division II in the preseason polls. It was their sixth straight year being ranked to enter the season. They had been ranked in the previous 52 AFCA polls dating back to the final poll in 2017 and looked to have another strong season under Simons. They opened up the season with a vengeance, beating Southern Nazarene on the road 53-20 before hosting Oklahoma Baptist, beating them 49-10. They followed that up with wins over Arkansas Monticello 59-19 during family weekend and went on the road to take on their toughest opponent to date the following weekend. In a top 20 matchup against number 20, Henderson State, Harding went into half down 9-7 and the two teams entered the fourth quarter in a tight game with Harding up 20-16. With just five minutes left in the game, Blake Dela Cruz found the end zone on a 12-yard run to lead Harding to a 27-16 win. The next two weeks, they bludgeoned southwestern Oklahoma and northwestern Oklahoma with a combined score of 126 to nothing. They continued their offensive onslaught, beating opponents like Alchita Baptist and Southern Arkansas by a combined 95-30 and entered their road matchup against Southeastern Oklahoma with the highest ranking in school history, sitting at number 4 in the Division II rankings. It was the second time in school history the team started 8-0 and extended their appearance in the top 25 polls to 60 straight. In the Southern Arkansas game, Harding rushed for 631 yards, the highest total in NCAA Division II this season, and the second highest total in program history. They finished the season beating Southeastern Oklahoma, East Central, and Arkansas Tech by a combined score of 159-7 and entered the Division II playoffs as the number two seed. They were tested early in the playoffs beating Central Missouri 35-34 and Grand Valley State 7-6 before blowing out Lenore Ryan. 55 to 14 in the semifinals to make it to the national championship game. The first time in program history they made it to the game. They traveled to McKinney, Texas to take on number one seed Colorado School of Mines in the title game, with it being the first matchup since 2018, where two teams were undefeated heading into the championship game. That 2018 matchup between Valdosta State and Ferris State ended with a 49 to 47 final score, and many expected the same in this year's matchup. The Ore Diggers were coming off a loss in the title game last year and looked for redemption while the Bison were on the Division II's best 18-game winning streak. Both schools were looking for their first national title in school history and both had top three scoring offenses and top three scoring defenses. Colorado School of Mines was led by quarterback John Matacha, who rewrote the college football record book for career touchdowns with 190 and passing touchdowns with 161, and was second on the list for total yards in a career with 16,731, and third in passing yards with 14,736. Harding, on the other hand, ran the flexbone offense, a version of the triple offense, and the offense rushed for 5,659 yards on the season, averaging 404.4 yards per game, which was the most in Division II history. The Colorado School of Mines was predicted to win the game 35-31. Harding felt differently and blew the ore diggers out 38-7 behind Blake Del Cruz's 208 rushing yards and Braden Jay's 161 as well as the two combining for three touchdowns. They rushed for 502 yards on the ground and became the first program in college football history to rush for over 6,000 yards in a season finishing with 6,161 yards. The Bisons outgained the ore diggers 548-341. It was the program's first national title in school history, and what made it so special is how they did it. While college football has been dominated by the passing game for the past few years, Harding ran it down your throat. Teams knew it was coming, but could not stop them this season. The 2023 season was a special season for Harding, and they will look to repeat come 2024. 
What do you think? Who wins the Division II national title in 2024? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.